Salama Benazulu Benako. In this video, we will study the word Hebrew and its Bantu etymology. Mbote I am Nabi Kefa. So to start, we will read from the book Light and Truth, section The Claim of Posterity. It is natural and scriptural that the posterity of great men be called after their father, down to the latest generation. The Hebrews are called after a bear, the great father, from whom all the Hebrews descend. The Israelites are called after the great father, Israel. The Jews are descended from Judah, their great father, and are called after him in Africa and Asia. There is significant historical, traditional, and cultural proof that the ancient people who biblically are called Hebrews and Israelites were of African descent, black people, Ethiopians, and Cushite, that is to say of African complexion, with black woolly hair, broad noses, and full lips. The Roman historian and senator named Tacitus wrote about the Israelites in his book, Histories, saying, Many assured us that the Israelites were a race of Ethiopian origin. Our word of interest for study is the word Hebrew. Our objective is to see if we can retrace this word back to the Kikongo. Doing so, we will reveal that the descendants of the ancient Hebrews are found, in this case, in Africa. A Jesuit Roman priest named Abbe Priard stated in his book of 1777, entitled The Kingdom of Luango Kakango, the Congo people have in their language words which resembles Hebrew, having the same definitions. According to his statement, the Congo people have a Hebrew vocabulary. Now we will study the word Hebrew and its etymology and retrace it back to the Kikongo Bantu root from which it was originally taken. And we will see that the Kikongo a Bantu language is the true Praleo Hebrew. The Bantu have indeed a Semitic language. And the Kikongo language is the mother tongue of all Bantu people. As the major tribes broke away through migrations, wars, exiles, and prosecutions, varieties of dialects were born. However, the Bantu dialects have all a common ancestral mother tongue, an African Cushitic Semitic language. Now let's look into the etymology of the word Hebrew. The biblical Abraham was the first individual to be called a Hebrew. Genesis 14, 13, and there came one that had escaped and told Abraham, or Abram, the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorites, the brother of Eshkol and brother of Aner, and these were confederate with Abram. Hebrew, or Ibri, patronymic from Eber, an Eberite, let's say a Hebrew and or descendant of a bear, one from beyond. The Hebrew consonants A, B, R, I can also be focalized as Abari or Habari in Bantu Swahili, meaning good tidings or news, proclamation, Abraham, as a Hebrew, is called patronymically after his ancestor, great father Eber, a son of the archfather Shem. The name Eber or Heber means region on the other side, situated across a stream, the opposite side. The name Eber is the same as 
abar to pass over or by or through alienate bring carry do away that's the outline of biblical usage strong definition abar a primitive root yes a primitive root to cross over so the name a bear is the same as abar from a primitive root to pass over to cross a stream to bring carry proclaim to traverse migrate travel and when we put all these definitions together we come to a hidden understanding a mystery reveals itself good tidings or proclamation coming from the other side of the stream or river now this interpretation uh, is supported by the following biblical verses Exodus 36 for 6 and Moses gave commandment and they caused it to be proclaimed yes abar or habari in Kiswahili which means to proclaim throughout the camp in okay. Leviticus 25 verse 9 then shall thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound a bar right proclaim or signal okay. habari right to proclaim or to inform on the tenth day of the seventh month in the day of atonement shall he make the trumpet sound once again the word a bar there right which is habari in Kiswahili, which also means to proclaim or to announce throughout your land. Now let us return to the word abar. It is written with a consonants ayin, bet, resh, which are a, b, r. In Paleo Hebrew rules, the letter ayin, which is the a, as the first consonant in a word is silent. Thus, a bar becomes bar. In Bantu, the letter R is interchangeable with L. A bar can therefore also be bal. This gives us the Kikongo word bala, which means to traverse, migrate, travel, carry. Yes, now, we have seen that the Hebrew bar has the same definitions. Yes, because it's also defined as to, to travel, yeah, or to, to migrate, or to carry, or to be carried away, yeah, or to cross over. See? So a bar has the same definition. Also to proclaim, which is habari in uh, Kiswahili. The consonant B L, right, from Bal, will also give us Mbala, Kikongo word, meaning other side or the coast. The bank of the Congo River is also called Mbala. Now there exists a Congo clan who bears the name Mbala, Bambala or just Baal. The name Hebrew is patronymically of Eber or Heber of the etymological root Abar. Now Heber stems from the Bantu Swahili Habari and the Kikongo Mbala, those who carry good news from the other side of the river. Travelers migrators of the chuluba concept samba samba migration of the legendary river sambachon now the word abar is also used to mean to carry away to alienate as the mbala the hebrews were often strangers in new lands now the bala people migrated from angola uh, during the 17th century, they settled in the Kwango Kwili region in the southwest of the Democratic Republic of Congo. 
we have seen that the word Hebrew, Ibri, which comes from the word Eber, which stems from the primitive root Abar, is the Kiswahili Habari and the Kikongo Mbala. Habari meaning good tidings, good news, proclamation, to share information, to signal, etc. Mbala, uh, also referring to the river coast of the Congo River and a ethnic group in the Congo, DRC and Angola, named Mbala. If you like this information and you are new to my page, don't forget to subscribe and join the Kefa clan. And of course, like and share this video. I am Nabi Kefa. Until we meet again, Beluka Banakongo.